Okay, let's um, begin. There was a testimony on the chat, and because I got disconnected, it's gone. Uh, it was Anthony, right? Anthony, who shared. It's from Moses. Anthony. Moses, yeah, Moses. Moses, uh, would you like to just share it uh, briefly, maybe in about a minute or less? Uh, yes, ma'am. Ma so uh, last eleven months, I was not having job, even though I was uh, experienced. Uh, Mo Moses, just home. one second, please. One second. We are not able to hear you very well. Are you all able to hear? He's saying something. Hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, so last nine Yeah, months, we can hear you now. Yes, ma'am. Uh, last nine Can months, you please be a little louder? Yes, ma'am. I'll be louder. Uh, uh, ma'am, I was yeah. not having job for eleven months. Uh, then okay. uh, I was into prayer all the time. So when I was getting time, uh, I was in prayer. And uh, okay. tomorrow is my joining date, and I'm worried oh, wow. uh, that uh, how will I pray? Huh. So the uh, time which was I've been giving uh, before. Uh, hmm. So that the precious time I can't give uh, now, right? Uh, when I'm going to job, uh, so that is my worry, ma'am. Okay. Um, so Moses is saying he for eleven months he didn't have a job. He prayed for a job, and tomorrow finally he's going. But when will he give that kind of time for prayer? Is his question. See, when we talk about developing a personal prayer life, we'll come to this. Even if we have a job, Moses, and if we are very busy through the day, some part of the day, I'm sure we can give in prayer to God. When we look at the example of Daniel, Daniel was a um, highly, highly influential man in the government offices during his days. But was he a man of prayer? Yeah, because he committed time for prayer. So the point is, you can look at your entire schedule and carve out time. Carve out time. So I hope that helps. And you're the best person to answer, you know, which part of the day that is. Uh, yeah, is that okay, Moses? Uh, yes, Mama. That's fine. Okay. All right. Yes. So we were saying, why don't some of our prayers get answered? And there are all kinds of hindrances. We ask the wrong thing. We ask with the wrong attitude. We ask without faith. There's also boundaries. Boundaries in prayer. Very important boundaries. One is we cannot control and manipulate the will of people. So I can't pray and say, God, make him, make her do this as a parent or, you know, maybe as a spouse or as a uh, co-worker. We cannot control people through prayer. That's the wrong understanding. So if I keep praying, I can control certain people. That's not how it works. We've already discussed when uh, the question about Judas came. We said God gives everyone free will. It's unfortunate that sometimes people make wrong choices. Choices even against God and living their lives however they like. Even God will not try to control them. How can we think of controlling people? The gospel is given. To everyone who believes, even then God is asking people to believe. Does he force anyone to believe? Did he force us to believe? No. Free will. Free will. So someone's will cannot be controlled through prayer. If we think, I'm going to pray hard, I'm going to fast. Let's see. You know, they have to change their mind. We're standing on the wrong foundation. We cannot make anybody make a decision which we want cannot happen because we are trying to work against free will that God has already given. Yes, we can influence, as I told uh, one of us the other day. See, if we live, a, let's take, for example, a family where parents are believing parents and they want their children to follow Christ. Parents cannot force the children to 
follow Christ. But what can they do? They can pray for the children. They can leave behind a godly example. A godly example in such a way that when the kids look at the lives of the believing parents, they say, wow, if this is what life is about with Jesus, I want it. Influence, positive influence, strong influence. That is something you and I can do. We are not forbidden. But manipulation, control. That is not a godly thing. Even God doesn't do it. We cannot do it through prayer. And it is usually said, you know, this whole thing of controlling, controlling people. Uh, from the kingdom of darkness, we see it. Some of us may have heard about these things. You know, people do uh, magic. They do so many occultic practices. To do what? To control. They try to control people. But that is ungodly. That's in fact satanic. It's demonic. So controlling is not a part of God's nature. He does not do it. We cannot do it using scripture or using prayer. Cannot happen. Okay. Next boundary. Let's look at the next boundary. Contradicting God's word or changing God's word. So whenever our prayers are against the purposes of God or the will of God, it cannot happen. See, for example, if I pray and say, God, put sickness on this person, make them very sick, you know, let them become weak and not be able to do anything that they do today. It's directly against the nature of God. We know in Exodus 15, 26, God introduced himself. I am Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals you. When he is a God who heals and I am praying and asking him, you do the opposite God, he can't do it. He won't do it. It's not aligned to scripture. So anything that you and I are asking, which is not aligned to God's purpose, will not happen, cannot happen. So we'll come to it later, how to pray a successful prayer. First, it's important to know God's will. If I know God's will and I pray aligned to it, there is greater probability for that to happen. So any, any questions, anything? Yes. Yeah, mic, please. Anyone who's not using? Yes. Mm. Okay, okay. Uh, no worries. I'll, I'll just uh, say her question. So she's saying, uh, if there is somebody whose behavior is not okay, and uh, we are praying and saying, God, their behavior is not okay. But what are, you, what are we asking? Change the behavior. To now, change the behavior. Does God touch the heart and change the behavior? Yeah, see, that's, that's fine. It, it's a prayer that's coming out of a good place where we are saying, God, change their heart, soften their heart, lead them to repentance. Those prayers are allowed. They're scriptural. We'll see. Um, you know, Paul writes that we can pray such prayers. So that's okay. But to say, God, make them do this, change, like you can't control you got it. Sometimes why we don't see that uh, it's more like, you know, we want them to accept Christ mm -hmm. because I'm from an unbelieving background. Yes. We are not seeing that change. They are becoming more and more religious in their ways. Yeah. Yeah. Their, you know, their God. Yeah, sure. So see, it's a, it's a uh, challenging thing. Sometimes when we pray for people to come to Christ or healing, if we go to the book of James, James 5 verse 16, where um, uh, James talks about the earnest prayer of a righteous man that avails much. So there is an element of patience when we pray for healing, when we pray for people to accept Christ, because these matters uh, in most instances may feel like it's taking a long time. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. But uh, hold on. That's all we can say. Uh, there's nothing wrong in praying for people to come to Christ, for people to be healed, people to change. Uh, but what we are trying to say is we can't control. You get what I'm saying, right? Like make them do this God, make them do that. God will not answer to those prayers. 
we have to let them journey so you know we can pray prayers like god you encounter them give them dreams visions i always remember a, a friend of mine her whole family was saved but she was not and she used to come to our fellowship uh just at the end of the fellowship she would just come say hi bye you know pick up her family members and go and she was quite a rebel like that so we would watch her the whole time and wonder everyone in her home is saved why is she not listening you know why is it she's not able to understand and we used to only pray for her what can you do you can only pray you can't force anyone to accept christ so she had an amazing amazing encounter with god she just decided one day to go for some retreat that was happening she went there and when she was in that retreat she had a dream okay so see these are the prayers we can pray encounter them give them dreams visions lord send angels send godly people into their lives we can pray like that god will do that so she had a dream in that dream she saw she was walking on the beach you know beautiful sea and she's walking alone and then jesus came and asked her something like why are you alone why can't you walk with me you know why are you rejecting me uh, it was a dream like that and in that dream itself she could sense the awesomeness of god and the majesty of god and she realized it is not ordinary it's jesus was asking her why are you rejecting me and uh, she woke up that morning and her whole mindset changed she accepted christ today she and her husband are pastors and leading you know con they have a congregation here in bangalore they have a congregation abroad and they are doing a wonderful work in the ministry it's every time i think about it i'm like wow that person who was no way close to accepting christ but it took an encounter we were all praying though we couldn't force but we were praying we just have to hold on we need some patience yeah okay all right um so yeah we can't control we can't contradict god's word now in the bible apart from jesus is there anyone like a an apostle whose prayer did not get answered think think paul okay when when didn't it get answered okay yeah right right so thorn in the flesh uh, we look at this at in second corinthians 12 verses 6 to 10 where uh, paul says there is a thorn in the flesh and um, i prayed about it uh, three times right three times but god did not remove it he just said my grace is sufficient for you why why did that happen there was God did not hear his prayer. So, can we apply this in our lives and say, "Yeah, I prayed about the problem, but God said I will not remove it. My grace is sufficient for you." Many people say, "Isn't it?" They we hear them say. i think it is in the certain areas uh, when god wants us to perceive okay okay in certain areas um like would you be able to substantiate it with some examples something regarding uh, uh, if you look at the marriage also mm mm-hmm. uh, uh, some sometimes we feel that it's not happening at the right times mm-hmm. but it takes times but it happens to the right person sometimes okay god wants us to persevere in that area and in okay. characteristic changes also i can say and okay. deep sure uh, but sri raj in these situations god is answering the prayer it's just that there's a delay it's not like god is saying no or god is rejecting that request am i right in saying that yeah you're right but in some characters where we deeply re- really want to change but uh uh that becomes a thorn for us when we are in christ mm-hmm. okay all right so yeah thank you for sharing but i would i would categorize these prayers as prayers that take a 
take a long duration for the answer to come rather than god saying no i'm not going to do it for you so uh, and i agree with you you know the scriptures say that uh, it develops patience for us i think james is the one who wrote about it uh, developing patience as we endure uh, so yeah but thorn in the flesh the way god answered paul's prayer is like saying no way i'm not going to remove it you keep it and uh, my grace is sufficient for you does god do that anymore and can we say that god has done that in some situation in our lives so oh, yes, can i speak yes please um i i believe um sometimes when we are going through some afflictions or um certain things that will bring spiritual growth Mm -hmm. and god wants that particular situation to purge us so mm -hmm. we can be fruitful we might think that it's it's an evil thing that's happening to us because it's a painful situation but at the end of the day god allows those things to happen to us and we might pray against those things not knowing that those things will end up being beneficial to us mm -hmm. so those kind of prayers we will pray that oh god please take me out of the situation instead of kind of flying through the situation instead mm -hmm. of allowing god to do his perfect work in us so some certain certain prayers like that god might not answer them okay so uh joan uh, thank you for sharing but again i feel like the prayers these prayers um okay you're saying god says no to it like god doesn't give it to us i'm saying just like paul's uh, and paul's prayer he wanted the torn out of his flesh but um, in that particular situation, God did not, he said he believes that because of pride, God allowed that thorn to be in his flesh. Mm -hmm. So God was walking through Paul's pride at that time. So that can happen in our lives as well. When there's certain weaknesses that God is using a particular situation to work in and we are not aware of. That okay. is what I'm saying, man. Okay, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. So see, we all understand when we are asking something amiss, it's not in the will of God or it's not in God's purpose or plan for us right now. And then God says no to it or it takes time for these things to happen. We read in James chapter 1 and verse 4, but let patience have her perfect work that uh, you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing so god lets us go through seasons where we have to exercise patience why because only patience can do a work in us to make us complete which we cannot there's no shortcut to it so we all when we experience patience there's a maturity that we come to okay so that we understand but the question that i'm asking is like apostle paul is there anything like a thorn in the flesh which God would say, even if you're praying for deliverance, I'm not going to remove it. My grace is sufficient for you. Yes. Pastor, I can ask you something. Uh, yes, Pooja, I'll come to you. There's someone in class here who wants to yeah, share yeah, something. Yeah. We'll, we'll come to you. Yes. So, um, Paul was a high caliber apostle of God. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, like if we have to compare it ourselves to him, yeah. uh, we are nowhere near to Paul. Yes. And uh, like, I think God operates uh, for different people in a different manner. Paul had a thorn, which might be a very strong temptation in his life uh like he was at the peak of his ministry and satan wanted him to fall down mm. and bring shame and maybe he was praying for that temptation or that thorn to go out of his life and god was like i will give you grace to overcome it mm. i won't take that temptation away maybe we all are going through the same kind of thing like we are not as as like the apostle paul but we also have something or the other like something small it might be a very small thing like maybe um, overcoming uh, um, talking uh, like using bad language that might be a thorn in my life like 
but god will say i will give you the grace to overcome that temptation but that, that temptation will always be there for you okay okay uh, vinay thanks for sharing thanks for sharing your point of view now we need to see whether it is aligned to what the scriptures say so how are we going to do that we will read that passage in context okay and then we will we will see whether um we can take this explanation or not pooja i'll come to you please give me a moment so second corinthians 12 verses 6 through 10 even if i should choose to boast i would not be a fool because i would be speaking the truth but i refrain so no one will think more of me yeah more of me than is warranted by what i do or say or because of these surpassingly great revelations therefore in order to keep me from becoming conceited i was given a thorn in my flesh okay now listen carefully we are all talking about thorn in my flesh what is the thorn in my flesh i was given a thorn in my flesh a messenger of satan to torment me so what is the thorn in the flesh it's a demon it's a demon a messenger of satan is a demon the demon was doing what torment torment paul how we don't know we don't have clarity on that three times i pleaded with the lord to take it away from me but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness therefore i will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that christ power may rest on me okay now the best way to interpret scripture is through scripture we ask the question what is the thorn in the flesh we can boldly say it was a demon was it a sickness was it a sickness no it so aha uh-huh. yeah but uh, metaphorically speaking i get it but it's a spirit it's a demon spirit yeah it's a demon spirit so that's the thorn in the flesh so based on this you and i cannot call a sickness a thorn in the flesh we can't because it was a demon very clear temptation because you mentioned temptation right so uh, i understand we're just trying to bring um, we're trying to get it but it's not a temptation so if you and i have a temptation and we say the temptation is not leaving me because god is saying my grace is sufficient for you that wouldn't be correct you and i can overcome every temptation so it's not a temptation ha huh. right right Mm. okay yeah see i i see where you're coming from regarding the temptation but a temptation would not qualify as a thorn in the flesh it would it would qualify as some of the challenges that we all face on the earth because we read about jesus also in the book of hebrews we read jesus christ tempted in every way yet without sin so he overcame temptation that's the pattern he gave us you and i we can be like jesus right that's what we are talking about so we can overcome temptation so temptation will not qualify as a thorn in the flesh that's the point sickness will not qualify uh temptation will not qualify how about people can we say oh my boss is a thorn in the flesh my sister is a thorn in the flesh so oh, my can we say that people are they the thorn in the flesh cannot it's not biblical we are not interpreting it correctly my neighbor my owner <laughs> right you can put people in that category and say oh they are the thorn in the flesh wrong yes uh huh those habits or like a bad spirit evil mm. spirit mm yeah so it is true if they pray for someone else the spirit leaves so okay. they can come out of the habit correct 
so here uh, paul is saying that throne uh, in my flesh so uh, it might be a devil yeah it, it's a demon so yeah. it's a it's a addiction it's a spirit or something so my doubt was how jesus lived he is also in the flesh mm. but he he lived a sinful life sinless yeah sinless, you mean sorry yes. okay sorry sinless life okay 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 so why paul uh, could not able to live because jesus also said one thing if a person uh, came to salvation uh, before he was in a sinful life if he follows the same sinful life after the salvation his life will be worse than before yeah see correct. all that correct what you're saying is uh, the oppression of demons uh, but we know jesus has died on the cross for us we already have the victory over every demon so there is no question of god letting or allowing a demon to oppress a believer we'll study about this in the next semester no i said jesus has already overcome satan and his demons so there is no question of tolerating the oppression of a demon in anybody's life especially in a believer's life we can overcome we will study about this in the next semester in the subject believers authority it's an entire course we are going to study about it but now in this case yeah it was a demon point number 1 it was not a sickness so if i pray for god to remove a sickness will he remove it yes so holding on to a sickness and saying god will not heal me it's a thorn in the flesh would not be accurate in terms of the context here it's a demon tormenting demon second thing notice second thing i'll read for us verse 6 even if i should choose to boast i would not be a fool because i would be speaking the truth but i refrain so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what i do or say or because of these surpassingly great revelations therefore when we read in a statement therefore therefore what does it mean because something is there it's a connecting thing because of something therefore in order to keep me from becoming conceited or from becoming proud i was given a thorn in my flesh a messenger of satan to torment me so paul is saying because of something therefore he was given a thorn in the flesh so that he does not become proud because of what if we go up what is that therefore therefore surpassingly great revelations who wrote uh, 13 or maybe 14 epistles of the new testament apostle paul so he's saying because of the revelations that i have i can become proud in order for me not to become proud there was given a thorn in my flesh okay for paul he got a thorn in the flesh because of mighty revelation today you and i how many epistles we wrote anyone here epistle of epistle of um, prem or epistle of khushboo no sure <laughs> only half a page somebody has written here since morning yeah and that's only for you right it's not for anyone okay so the books of the bible we know the bible is already canonized we don't add to it anymore the founding apostles have written and that's it okay apostle paul and his status like uh, when i described his caliber was different his caliber was different he's a he's a founding apostle he's one of those founding apostles who was given incredible revelation you and i cannot compare to the revelation that paul carried so there's no question of god giving us a thorn in the flesh it's not at all applicable it was only applicable to paul so we can't take this passage and apply it to anybody we cannot that would be inaccurate okay so to use this as an example uh, 
to say god does not answer prayer or i prayed but god is saying my grace is sufficient for you we're not applying it correctly so let's be clear on that we can we, first of all we cannot apply this to us secondly it's not a sickness it's not a temptation it's not anything else it was a clear demon that was tormenting only paul because of his surpassingly great revelations okay so i i hope that's clear i'll i'll come to you i'll, I'll come to you all uh, i'll go to pooja pooja has been waiting yes pooja please of the praise lord pastor praise the pastor lord. somebody asked me yeah somebody asked me because one brother is there past is the pastor but he is prophesying also and uh, he is serving the lord now uh, uh -huh. but few few year now see, he is serving the lord god talk uh, speak to him but he gets he he gets scared pastor because mm -hmm. uh, because yeah because he didn't uh, study more and uh, he didn't have any documents just so he he gets uh, gets uh, study uh, he get fear and he say can i serve the lord mm -hmm. okay um so uh, pooja your question would be no he didn't have any uh, documents means uh, that pastor certificate he didn't have any any documents okay so a person he did not have any documents and he was still serving the lord god spoke to him and he he pray more also pastor and he uh, prophesying also and his his he have ministry he 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 serving the lord also mm -hmm. but he get scared now but he is get scared get scared yeah. so um, yeah. so are you asking if it is okay for him to serve without documents or Means not other documents. Means he didn't have any pastor certificate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I told him to join the class, but he say, uh, he say I can't speak more English. I can't study more. So how how can I do? How how can I join? I he tell me like this. Okay. Ah, uh, so ah, uh, Pooja, your question is uh, slightly away from what we are discussing right now. I would suggest that uh, you, um, you said you tell your pastor friend about the e-learning option, and uh, they can try it out. And uh, I, I think that should help. Okay, pastor. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Pooja. Yes, thank you. Uh, and uh, other questions here on the or comments on the chat are. in agreement with what we have already discussed right now so that's okay thank you pastor yes no problem our free will god's will is for the lord i must okay all right so let me come to the questions in class uh, yes yes no <clears throat> Hmm. All right. I'll repeat the question again. Yes. So, a sickness, a temptation, hmm. um, can't be a thorn of flesh hmm. because a thorn of flesh is uh, described as a demonic spirit, right. which was um, whatever it was hmm. doing to Paul. Okay. <laughs> And uh, people, I've heard people uh, telling this. They won't take the term thorn of flesh, hmm. but they'll take the term uh, for the glory of God. Mm. so i am going through uh such sickness uh for the glory of god yeah, i think uh, uh jesus in one of his miracles he says uh, for the glory of god this mm. happened because of the glory of god mm. uh, they'll take that context and they'll say okay this is for the glory of god mm. and we see that in context like uh, he did it for paul that is not applicable for us mm. and that also by his grace only thank you for god for that mm -hmm. and how so if that is so uh, we can't take things out of context that right. it was for the glory of god for that context mm. and uh, people who are christians who are strong christians believers they say okay i am going through this sickness for the glory of god like i'm praying for the healing but it's not getting healed maybe this god not healing me is for the glory of god yeah so see in the context of sickness right in the context of sickness we again we have in the second year we have a very deep study uh, on healing and deliverance ministering healing and de deliverance biblical principles 
so we have to think about sickness and disease the way uh, the bible talks about it and how did jesus deal with it so in a simple way I, i'll tell us right now whenever jesus saw somebody who was sick he always healed them he always healed them he never told someone don't come come tomorrow come later i of course there were there were times when uh, there were issues like you know when a lady came she was outside of the covenant but even then he did the miracle he did the miracle so the point is when jesus did his ministry and he showed us that he was against sickness 1 john 3 8 says jesus came to destroy the works of the devil jesus came to destroy the works of the devil one of which is sickness and disease now if we also say we've understood right we we've talked about jesus jesus came to destroy the works of the devil hebrews 13:8 jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever nothing has changed today if you and i go and we say jesus heal me i'm sick how he ministered 2000 years ago he will minister the same way now why people don't receive healing there are many explanations to that but jesus heals he always heals he always has he always will that is very 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 clear now after establishing this scripturally if we say god has given me a sickness for the glory of god it's not it's not aligning it's not aligning so that that's what it is vinay uh, okay so we have to look at scripture then we say something that is acceptable but when we are saying opposite yeah it it sounds very it's very sounds very spiritual <laughs> but is it aligned to the nature of god is it aligned to the work of god we don't see it aligned so we can't accept it okay yeah sure uh any any other questions here yes the mic mic please so uh, huh. like here um, sickness and uh, temptation it's not there like mm. this is not demonic operation of giving sickness and uh, temptation because it can't be from god mm. so then what type of demonic operation was there mm -hmm. for like yeah okay so what is the what is the torment uh, okay even for this you're all studying the bible you're all going to be preaching the bible so see we should not say something that does not exist the question is what was it if it's not a temptation if it's not a disease what is the torment if there are parallel scriptures in other places that we can find the answer we can answer but as far as i know i don't have an answer to that so i don't know people say uh, paul had uh, paul had an eye problem he got diabetes. an eye problem he had oh yeah diabetes i don't know people say all kinds of things but uh, can we confirm it with scripture if we can't then just let it be we don't know he was tormented how was he tormented we don't know maybe he didn't want to tell us there are many maybes many maybe 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 but we will not get into maybes yes uh, like i'm doing the work of god in my spirit but mm. in my flesh i'm uh, fulfilling the covenant of sin hmm where, where is that hmm it's in roman 7 right yeah roman 7 okay so that's another interesting passage we will talk about it so roman 7 he talks about the weakness of the flesh how the flesh pushes us to do certain things but in roman chapter 8 he talks about the vic 
victory through the Holy Spirit. So, you see, it's not complete. Romans 7 is not the end. He's saying, yeah, it's a struggle. I have the struggle. My flesh seems to be powerful. But he goes on to say that the power of the Spirit in me, I, I, I'm more than a conqueror. So the end you should see. He's just beginning to explain that I have these challenges, but through the Spirit of God, I conquer. By the Holy Spirit, I conquer. Romans chapter 8. Hmm. Yeah, 31, I think, no? Romans, I'm more than a conqueror. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah? Uh, yeah, so see, we are believers. So what is our assumption? Um, I should not have any temptation. Uh, now that I'm saved, I don't have any problems. That's, that's not the case. In fact, we become more aware of all these challenges once we are born again. Everyone has temptations. Uh, we are everyone, all unbelievers, believers. We all have temptations, but we are more aware, I think, of what this is once we become a believer. So it's there, but we can conquer. So Romans 7, don't read it without Romans 8. Romans 8, Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And then, you know, he goes on. He, he talks about... Wait, I'll just get, give you that script. But on, on, on uh, Romans 7, 25, mm. he finishes like this. Mm. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Mm. But with my flesh, the law of sin. So See, my doubt there is... is a, huh, your is, doubt is? So doubt is when we are living in the world, we are in the flesh. Mm. So it is unfortunate for us to fulfill the law of flesh, sorry, mm. law of sin. Mm. We cannot able to come out of that, right? We will have the temptation. So same as like Paul also facing. Huh. Yeah. So he, he fulfilled both. Fulfilled both. See, he overcame. That's what he's saying. Romans 8, 37. Um, he says, we are no in all these things. We are more than conquerors. So he's talking about overcoming by the Holy Spirit. See, here's the deal. We are believers. We are new creation in Christ. Our spirit is completely transformed. In my soul, in my body, I still have struggles. I still have struggles. So the law of the flesh, what you're calling. We have propensity to sin. Can a child of God sin? There is possibility. Possibility is always there. But what, what Paul is saying, if you walk by the spirit, you will you will nullify that possibility. Got it? We all have the possibility. Propensity to sin is in all of us, flesh, all of us. But why are we here learning about growing in God? We can conquer every time. If we understand what Jesus has done on the cross for us, who we are in Christ, right? All the blessings, covenant blessings, we conquer, 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 and keep moving forward. So propensity is there, but we are more than conquerors. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Ma'am, sin in mm. the sense means not the bad habits or uh, mm. those things. But Bible says if you if you know to do good things, you do it. The, the ability is there, but you are not doing that, it mm. is a sin. Mm. So it may be uh, due to the law of the government. Some good things we we can able to do, but could not able to do means it's a sin. Yeah, if it's in your power to do it and you don't do it, the Bible says, yeah. So, see, God can give us wisdom and grace to do the right things at all times. So we conquer through the word and the leading of his Holy Spirit. Okay? Yes. Verse 11. Hmm. Which one? Which, uh, uh, Psalm. Psalm. Psalm 119. Yes. 11. It is written that if... Uh, Word of, uh, word of God will be in our heart, so we will not sin. Hmm. Yeah, see, that's true. What this means is that when the word of God is in, in our hearts, we have the strength to overcome. We have the strength to overcome. 
but what we were talking about is the flesh is a real thing for even a believer every believer we are battling the flesh we are battling temptation every day we are battling uh, sin every day right so what does paul write about i don't want to get into this uh, we'll talk about this in believers authority also but paul says crucify the flesh that's the best way to deal with the flesh crucify it walk in the spirit crucify the flesh every day we have to overcome every day we have to become stronger that's how yeah fasting prayer saying no to the flesh you know the flesh the temptation will say yeah do this do this every time you have to say no 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 literally you have to starve that flesh in you crucify kill it that's the way yeah yes so um since we are analyzing everything mm -hmm. i have a question it's mm -hmm. it's something which happened mm -hmm. so uh, since it's a topic of prayer and intercession there yes. is a uh, church huh. which declared a fasting and prayer okay that another church should shut down oh and, uh, <laughs> okay should, uh, should shut down it should close okay. and i know i'm not bothered and it's it's definitely not the will of god and uh, he yeah. would never say such thing but mm. they did mm. and the other church shut down mm. immediately mm. could it be a coincidence or if this prayer was really answered mm. can mm. the prayers be answered by mm. the devil oh. okay because wow. they would have prayed in jesus name they would have prayed in mm. all this thing mm. but definitely we know because it he will not contradict to the word mm. but mm. the prayers got answered How yeah you see it? see the prayer it it happened uh for that we can't say that the prayer got answered because it's a contradictory prayer that they are praying for a worshiping community to stop how can god answer that prayer see there's there's enough place for every church to thrive there's no competition so definitely god is not the one who has <laughs> taken this action now why it stopped i don't know that there, there can be many reasons why it actually stopped and you and i may not be able to find those uh, reasons uh, the and devil is the, the lord of the air then huh the, the lord of the air the prince of this world yeah yeah receives these things and it's exactly what he wants to be fed mm -hmm. put it yeah put it. so see are the people empowering demons by praying these prayers uh, now again that's a question which Uh, I, I can't answer clearly, uh, but of course the Bible says, "Don't give the devil a foothold." So, uh, Ephesians four twenty seven. Uh, yeah, let me just quickly check that. Ephesians four twenty seven. Yeah, don't give the devil a foothold. Now, maybe there could have been something where the enemy got a foothold. and he managed to uh, destroy the work but again we can't say did the devil answer prayer because he's not even the kind who hears prayer he does his own thing so don't even bother okay All right so I, i think we had a pretty uh, fruitful discussion here and that uh, gives us some grip on answered prayer so we will stop right here and we'll pick it up uh, next week uh, let's pray and close and again i want to request somebody from the online batch to uh, unmute and pray aloud anyone yes uh, shridaj would you like to lead yeah yes please go ahead yeah, thank you uh thank you father
uh, it's a beautiful honor that you blessed us uh, so we can learn more about the prayer and intersections. Uh, I, I'm thankful because uh, uh, how powerful a prayer section is and uh, uh, Jesus Christ always used that to uh, encounter his uh, personal emotions and uh, uh, the difficulties that he was going through. And even in the part of like Garden of Gethsemane when he was uh, going to be betrayed, his emotions and his uh, sweat turned into blood for the God. That much uh, he prayed. And in John also we can see how much he prayed for his disciples and uh, his glorification as well as for the believers also. So let us focus on towards that. So our life, my prayer life can be awesome and uh, being connected with you always for the God. I'm really thankful. I'm grateful to you. Thank for ma'am for giving me such a uh, beautiful thing so I can learn a lot more things from this. I love you. Pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sriraj. And thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a good day and a good week ahead. Yeah, thank you, ma'am.